Hi again everyone, I'm Jeff Pirashad. Thanks for watching my channel. Today we're going to go through a report that the USB-C recently released regarding urethane balls. And I know what you're thinking. You thought we were done with urethane. I'm sick of urethane. I don't want to hear no more about urethane. Well, guess what? USB-C is not done with urethane. So as long as they're going to talk about it, I figured I would talk about it a little bit and basically get into what it means. And the one big question that it raises uh, this new study. Uh, so we'll get to that at the end. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this report and I'm going to try to translate all these sciencey, mathy things into English uh, because I know a lot of bowlers aren't really you know, great at math or science or physics or any of that stuff. Don't care. Uh, don't want to know about it. Uh, so I'm here to help you just kind of understand what it means in normal language. And to do that, I have my USB-C to English dictionary. So we're going to be taking this dictionary, we're going to be taking all these techie terms, and we're going to be talking about them in normal language. So let's get into it. Uh, the USB-C's report, you can actually find this report on bull.com. If you go to the uh, bull.com and you go to the USB-C tab, uh, there's a subsection called Equipment Specifications Home. And if you click on that, it brings up a, some things on the left, and then on the right, there's a, like a, a list and titled Equipment Specifications. And the second thing down is called Bowling Ball Hardness Research. And if you bring up that page, you'll see it's a, the very first one says, click here for the Footprint Research Report published in October 2023, which was last month. And actually, I think this might have been released a few days ago. So this is really recent new stuff. Um, if you want to read it, go right ahead. The link is there. It's public knowledge. This isn't secret or anything. It's right up on bull.com. So you can take a look at it yourself. So what they've done here is they're talking about the footprint that a ball makes on the lane. Well, what's the footprint? So when a ball is rolling down the lane, only a very small part of the ball is actually touching the lane. It's like a little itty bitty circle. And that little circle that's the only part of the ball that's touching the lane. And you'll see when your ball comes back, it has some oil on it. There's like a line and a track of oil. That's because that's the only little part of the ball that was touching the lane. And that part of the ball that's touching the lane is called the footprint. So what's the big thing with urethane is that, uh, and why the PBA decided to uh, ban urethane balls that were too soft is because they thought urethane balls that were too soft were leaving too big of a footprint on the lane and maybe they were hooking too much or other things were happening so uh, we want to talk about that and see if this is actually a thing uh, or not so the USBC uh, they released this report and it's got a whole bunch of graphs and charts in it so I'm just going to go through these graphs and charts one by one and tell you exactly what they mean in normal language so the first chart that they have is titled Footprint versus Hardness. And in parentheses, it says production. Now, in this report, they kind of differentiate between two different types of balls. Balls right off the factory press, uh, the factory uh, line, uh, right off the drill press, uh, that's called production. It's right out of production. The other one says use. And these are bowling balls that have been used. So fresh balls, used balls. That's the difference. So this first one, is footprint versus hardness production. So that's talking about the footprint the ball makes on the lane compared to the hardness of the ball when the ball is fresh. It hasn't been drilled yet, hasn't been thrown, it's right off uh, the factory line. And so you can see on the chart, on the bottom, uh, it starts at 74 and works its way over to 84. 74 is a softer ball, 84 is a harder ball. And on the left, going up and down, it says footprint diameter, parentheses IN. IN means inches. And it's just, you know, actual normal inches like a ruler. And it uh, starts at 0 0.080 inches and goes up to 0 0.180 inches. So we were talking about a fraction of an inch here. And you can, I mean, that's normal. You, When the ball comes back uh, through the ball return, uh, you see a track on the ball and, you know, it's like a, a you know, like a quarter of an inch or less than a quarter of an inch. And a quarter of an inch would be 0 0.250. So you can see we're talking about a half of a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch around there somewhere, a little more, a little less. So you can see the balls that are about 75 hardness, the ones they tested, which is these up in the upper left corner, are about 0.15 in diameter, 0.15 inches. 
And as the balls get a little harder, as you move to the right, the diameter goes down. So balls that are 78-ish are about 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.11. They, they tested, you can see there's six dots here. There's four dots in the upper left corner. They tested a bunch of different balls. And uh, so you know, it's kind of what you would expect. Uh, you go down to 82, the one ball there is at 0 0.1. So it's what you would expect. A ball that is harder has a smaller footprint on the lane. A ball that is softer has a bigger footprint on the lane. And generally, you'd think a ball that has a bigger footprint is going to hook more uh, because more of it is touching the lane and therefore it can generate more friction and uh, the surface of the ball uh, can you know, basically help the ball motor. It's the same thing with your car um, using a, a snow tire or a regular tire. The snow tire might have more traction. Um, the bigger footprint is more traction. Think of it that way. So that's the first chart. The second chart is called total hook overview parentheses all shots. So they took these balls. Uh, they actually used four for these tests. They had two urethane balls. We don't know what they were, but we know there were two of them and they had two of each. So there's urethane one, sample one, urethane one, sample two, and then urethane two, sample one, urethane two, sample two. So maybe one of them was a purple hammer, one was a pitch black, that, who knows? It could be anything. But um, we know, uh, we'll see a little later kind of what the hardness of these were. They both were around 75-ish. Uh, what they use. So again, I don't know what balls they use. They don't say specifically. They might have just been generic, but I don't know. Um, then the report doesn't say. But we can see here uh, shots thrown on the bottom for goes from 0 to 100. And then total hook on the left goes from 0 to 35 boards. So they're talking about total board coverage going left and going right. How much, how many total boards does this thing hook? And the shots thrown, they started at the first shot and they threw go all the way to 100 shots. So they threw all four of these balls 100 times. And what we can see is the very first shots thrown with the balls generally hooked a little more than the rest of them. So you see this orange one is urethane one sample two, and it hooked more than kind of the rest of the shots. And uh, the yellow dot hooked more most for the most part than most of the rest of the shots. And this kind of matches up to what you would expect from a urethane ball. I think you've all kind of noticed this. If you own a urethane ball, you know when you go a, a, and throw it the first time of the night, the first shot of the night, it usually hooks a bit more than it does after it gets some oil on the cover. Um, which is why it's important to throw. If you have, if you're going to a tournament and it's maybe a short pattern tournament and you brought three urethane balls with you, throw them all in practice, even if you're not going to use them out of the gate because you want to get some oil on them to start so that when you change to the ball later, it doesn't just, you know, hook off the gutter or, you know, pick the seven pin off the rack or something. You, if you're right-handed. Um, so you want to get that out of the way early, you know, throw a shot with it, put it back in your bag, you know, let it sit. Um, and you can see the, the gray dot, uh, the blue dot here in the, in the middle of like 10 here, uh, hooked a little more and the gray ones hooked a little more. So, uh, there, I mean, there are some outliers. There always are maybe, you know, the shot hooked, hit the dry too much. Who knows? Like this one gray one here, but for the most part, we can ignore the one anomaly and just kind of see that it follows a little bit of a line. And early on, there was a average of here at about, uh, 22, 23 on the orange and yellow lines. And that kind of goes down to about 19, 20. So after a hundred shots, uh, the balls hook about three boards less. Um, and it's around the same, you know, for the red and the orange, the blue and the gray lines are kind of interesting because they didn't really change very much. The blue line started at 20 and ended at 20. And the gray line started at about 18 or 19 and ended at about 18 or 19. So whatever those two balls were didn't really through looks like about 90 shots they you know they started here i guess for whatever reason um those balls didn't really change the the first shot in the 90th or 100th shot or whatever hook almost the same so there was no real change uh through with use so let's go to the next chart and it shows urethane one and average ball paths for on 10 shots, 40 shots, 70 shots, and 100 shots. So the blue line is 10 shots. Excuse me. The blue line is 10 shots. And you can see that blue line had a, 
a little more hook. This is down lane position at 60 feet. This is 60 feet is the pin deck, 15 feet is the arrows. Lateral position, 20 uh, is the middle arrow and zero is the gutter. So just imagine this was a lane where they released the ball just to the right of the big dot at the foul line, which coincides with the middle arrow. And the ball got out to about, it looks like the seven or eight board, not the seven board, uh, maybe six or seven board, and then hooked back and got to about 17, which is around the pocket. Um, after 40 shots, 70 shots, and 100 shots, you see it hooked a bit less. So those first 10 shots seem to hook a little more and then it calms down um, about, as we said, about two or three boards or so. And so you can see that matches up. Um, so this chart here, there's a lot of numbers, um, but we'll go through them really quick and you'll see uh, what it means. So urethane one, sample one, urethane one, sample two, urethane two, sample one, urethane two, sample two. Those are the four balls that they used. In the shots column, you'll see each one of those four balls has five entries. Zero shots, 10 shots, 40 shots, 70 shots, and 100 shots. And then it repeats for each of those balls. And then they measured, after every one of that number of shots, they measured the footprint diameter and the hardness. Now, what's important in this report and what the USBC is kind of you know, patting themselves on the back for is that they invented a machine that measures footprint diameter. Yay. Okay. So good job, USBC. You know, sanctioned dollars, hard at work. You invented a machine, you perfected it. Great work. So this machine measures footprint diameter in inches. And you can see that at zero shots, let's just look at urethane one sample one. So the first urethane ball, the, the one of those two. Footprint diameter was 0.152 inches. And then after 10 shots, the diameter is 0.162 inches. And then after 40 shots, the diameter is 0.164 inches. After 70 shots, it's 0.160 inches. And after 100 shots, it's 0.163 inches. So you can see as the ball is being thrown, the footprint diameter is going up a little bit. Uh, it's getting bigger. So. That's, you know, kind of what everybody thought, right? After, as you use a urethane ball, it gets softer and the footprint diameter gets bigger because it's softer, so it hooks more, right? Uh, well, let's go down. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So let's go down to urethane one, sample two. And you can see it's kind of the same thing. Starts off with no shots thrown at 0.153 inches as a footprint diameter. Then right after it's thrown, 0 0.161, 0 0.163, 0 0.157, 0 0.160. As soon as it's thrown, 10 shots, it, the footprint gets bigger. But then it's really not going up a whole lot after that. And the same thing with the other one, right? After 10 shots, from 10 shots to 100 shots, this went from 0 0.162 inches to 0 0.163 inches. That's a one thousandth of one inch. That's nothing. So... This one went from 0.161 after 10 shots to 0 0.160 after 100 shots. This one, that, the footprint actually got smaller by one one, south, one one thousandths of an inch. So what it looks like is that it's just not changing uh, after those initial 10 shots. Uh, so let's go to the second urethane ball, sample one and sample two. Sample one at zero shots is 0.156 and then after 10 shots, the diameter goes up to 0 0.160. So again, it went up. Um, but then it's really not changing a whole lot. 0 0.158, 0 0.160 again. And then after 100 shots, 0.163. So this specific urethane looks like did change a bit uh, at the end of uh, the 100 shots. Um, the second sample of that ball, around the same. Started off at 0.159 of a diameter then goes way up to 169 and 170, and then kind of comes down again, the 162, 165. So, I, you know, this ball's going up and going down, who knows? But we can see there's a general trend where after 10 shots, the footprint gets way bigger, and then just kind of chills and hangs around there for a while. So what does that mean? Well, we would think it means that, you know, the ball's getting softer, the footprint is going up, but, or the footprint's getting bigger, but, Here's the interesting thing about this. Um, so the, uh, so now we look at the hardness. And the hardness starts at 74 on the first ball, 
Then after 10 shots, 71.3. But then it's not really changing a whole lot, is it? 71.6, 72.0, 71.4. Like it's not, after 10 shots, the hardness gets softer. I mean, we know urethane balls get softer with use, right? Um, I mean, that we figured that out last year or two years ago, whenever the USB-C started this mess. Um, so after 10 shots, the hardness is going down by like three on the durometer, three and a half. But then it's not really changing. It's not doing anything after 100 shots. From 10 to 100, nothing. From urethane one sample two, starts at 75.2 hardness, so even harder than the first one. After 10 shots, the softness is, or the hardness goes all the way down to 71.2. It changed by four. And then 71.3, 72.2, 72.1. Again, almost no change. This one actually got a little harder after 10 shots. What does that mean? What about the second ball? Sample one starts at 75.6 on the durometer. Uh, after 10 shots, goes down to 73. Then 73, 73.8, 73.5, barely changes at all in softness. So it these balls, they change softness from after 10 shots, they get softer. But then from the 10th shot to the 100th shot, nothing, nothing, no change. Let's try urethane 2 sample 2. Starts at 74.8. After 10 shots, the hardness is now 72.2. Goes down by about two and a half. And then from 10 shots to 100 shots, 72.2, 72, 73.2, .2, It doesn't get softer. This one gets harder also. So urethane 2, both samples, seem to get a little harder with use. Urethane 1 seems to get a little softer, but not really a whole lot. What's going on? I mean, come on, USB-C. Like, what does this all mean? So <clears throat> we'll talk about that too. So let's go to the next uh, thing here. So now we're talking about the footprint diameter versus use. And I think we just talked about this a bit. So you can see all four of these balls on the very left at the zero shot line, they start out with a smaller footprint. And then after 10 shots, they jump up and then they just kind of chill and hang around after 10 shots, 40 shots, 70 shots, hundred shots. Like that's what we saw on that chart. This, this graph just kind of puts that chart in a picture, same thing. And so now we do the same thing with the hardness, which we just talked about also. These balls start off in the 75-ish range. After 10 shots, they go all the way down to here, 72, 73, 71. And then from 10 to 100 shots, no change, barely, if any. Maybe a little bit they went, they got even hard, you know, they went back harder. What is that, you know? So we know your thing gets softer after use, but apparently it's only getting softer after 10 shots of use. From 10 shots to 100 shots of use doesn't make a damn bit of difference. They're not getting harder at all. They're not getting softer at all. I mean, the footprint diameter is not even changing. So, and then we get to uh, this amazing graph, uh, which basically puts it in a picture. Footprint versus hardness use. So these are the used balls, or the ones that have been used, not the production ones. We'll get to the production ones in a second. In fact, you know what? I'll put them both up on the screen. So let's look at them both at the same time. <coughs> footprint, excuse me, footprint versus hardness for used balls. That compares the footprint to the hardness. So, but these are when they're used. So we already talked about before when they come off the assembly of the production line, the softer balls have a bigger footprint. We, we, that's the first thing we talked about. Softer balls have a bigger footprint, right? And that's this bottom chart with the blue lines, with the line going down and you know diagonally down. But now we get to a point where the footprint versus hardness use, this is the cool one because this says that even when the ball is used over time, the footprint's not changing. So the change was the change to everything kind of happens in that first 10 shots and then the ball is like fine, like for 100 shots, at least until 100. We don't know, they didn't, this study doesn't go past that. So we're talking about 100 shots. So if you were to use a urethane ball for 10 games, you know, strikes, you know, if you bowl 300, 10 times or nine times or whatever it is. So the footprint that the ball has, the amount of the ball that's touching the lane doesn't really change. 
even when the ball is getting harder or softer um, because of use. Whereas the footprint versus hardness production shows that the footprint is bigger when balls are softer from the factory. So what that really means is a ball that starts at 78 and goes down to 73 is different than a ball that starts at 73 because the ball that it starts at 78 and goes down to 73 is going to basically retain the footprint of the 78 ball. It's not going to have the footprint of the 73 ball. Whereas the ball that's 73 out of the factory, that's going to have a bigger footprint. Um, so more of the 73 from the factory is going to be touching the lane. And that's what brings up a kind of important question. So now USBC, at the end of this report, they made these key findings. Uh, one, a repeatable tool was prototyped and utilized to measure footprint diameters of bowling balls. Good job, USBC. You know, we'll pat you on the back again. You, you deserve a medal. I hope you win one. Two, a bowling ball's production hardness and footprint size are strongly correlated to one another. That's true. The hardness of the ball out of the factory and the footprint size are related. The softer the ball out of the factory, the bigger the footprint is going to be. The harder the ball out of the factory, the softer the footprint is going to be. Number three, balls that measure softer through use do not exhibit a strong correlation to change in footprint. As we said, the balls that get softer over time don't get a bigger footprint over time the bigger footprint stays with the balls that were softer out of the factory. So number four, this study reinforces that urethane bowling balls dropping in hardness measurements through use does not impact per ball performance on the lane. What? Like, isn't that the whole reason this has been such a, you know, a, a big kerfuffle? I mean, to use that word, like that's what this whole mess is about, right? This whole situation is because urethane balls got softer overuse and they thought because it's softer overuse, therefore made a bigger footprint on the lane and it hooked more, right? That, that was it. That isn't that why the PBA banned them to begin with? Like purple hammers, pitch blacks, but you know, gone on, 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 on. Um, can't use them anymore because they're too soft. Why does it matter if they're too soft? Well, the earth, I mean, the PBA says, well, if they're too soft, they're going to hook too much, right? Well, the hook is related to the footprint of these urethanes, and the footprint doesn't change. So if the drop in hardness, meaning if the balls getting softer are not making a bigger footprint on the lane and it does not impact ball performance on the lane, why is the PBA banning them? Anybody know? If you know, you got the answer. Hey, PBA, leave a comment below. I would love to know because that's not what this study says. This study says that you just banned them and you've tried to figure out a good reason to ban them, but that reason doesn't really work, according to this study. I mean, now, this study isn't perfect because what I would like to see is this study extended out to a thousand games or 500 games or longer than a hundred. Like we know what happens from zero to 10, like there's a big change. And we knew what happened from 10 to a hundred. There was almost no change. But, you know, if a player is bowling, you know, the US Open, 10 games is what, the first block and a half of qualifying? Like, there's 30 more games to go. You know, what happens at the end of the U.S. Open? What happens three U.S. Opens down the line? What happens after the U.S. Open and the Masters and the World Championship and Cheetah and Wolf and all that? And they've used this, they're using the same urethane ball over and over and over. You know, they've got 700 games on it. What happens then? I would like to know. I would ask USBC, if you're watching this, 
do a new study, but extend it out way past the 100 games because I don't think 100 is, or 100 shots, I don't think 100 is enough to figure out really what happens over time. Like this, hap this shows what happens over a little bit of use. 100 shots isn't really that much in the grand scheme of things. You know, you were, if you're saying that a ball from 2018 can't be used in 2022 or 2023 or 2024, I guarantee you that ball from 2018 has got more than 100 shots on it. Um, that thing had 100 shots on it back in 2018. What's it doing now? Give me another study with 500 shots, 1,000 shots, 2,000 shots. I don't know. Find some intern from the local college to just throw a ball down the lane a zillion times. You know, give him, you know, $10 an hour or whatever. You know, buy him lunch, whatever. Um, but let's do a, a longer study and let's find out because I think that's the million dollar question, right? That's the question. If the ball dropping in softness doesn't impact performance, why in the heck are we banning them? Mm -hmm. So uh, PBA, USBC, if you want to answer that question for me, please. I, I like to learn things, so learn me. You know, Teach me what's going on uh, here because I'm reading this study and it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. It, I mean, the study makes sense. But the ramifications and the results of what happened before all this by everybody just seems to not really, you know, they, they don't, two and two don't add up to four. So, uh, all you guys, if you uh, like this video, uh, let me know, uh, please, in the comments, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe, get notifications of new videos. We've got some new stuff coming soon. I've got another blue, uh, new blue hammer co video coming soon where we do some surface changes to it. So, uh, uh, stay tuned for that and uh, let me know what you think uh, if you like it if you don't like it you know I, I love answering comments I love reading them so uh, let me know you can also find me on TikTok I do some live streaming while I'm bowling you can find me at swish 710 bowling on TikTok uh, swish 710 bowling so uh, until next time I will catch you guys later